You may find this odd, but I think the typical retort against Islam that it needs to be secularized is fundamentally wrong. Secularism is the problem, not the solution. Secularism, as commonly understood, is the belief that the sacred and all the accompanying moral requirements are private matter and should remain locked behind closed doors, never to grace the public square. This idea is sometimes stated as, quote, separation of religion from public life, end quote. The fact is, however, that despite the best wishes of the evolutionists, human beings cannot keep religion out of public life. To worship something beyond ourselves is as natural as breathing, eating, sleeping. It's a part of our DNA. It is the sense of divinity in each one of us that must by force of nature come into the open. Secularists actually know this. That's why there are no real pure secularists. There are only secular humanists, secular statists, secular environmentalists, and the like. Secularists ultimately worship, you see, something beyond themselves, putting that what they worship at the center of the public square. Today they use the credo separation of church and state to scare Christians and Jews from being public about their faith commitment, all the while insisting that their humanism is not a matter of religion, it's simply a matter of science or of sound public policy. But don't be fooled. Secular humanism has all the trappings of religion and it certainly has the creeds and the pageantry as well. Today, the ultimate public expression of secular humanism is sexual license under the guise of human rights language. Human rights, you see, they used to be about ontological realities like ethnicity, skin color, and other unalterable traits. But now it's about who we choose to sleep with. Our public religion is sexual freedom. Although they do not attend a regular house of worship, or necessarily adhere to a set of dogmas, secular humanists do share a common devotion to the proposition that humankind is the measure of all reality. And in a sense, the ultimate public expression of this proposition is gay pride. Gay pride is about more than human dignity for gay people. Gay pride represents the ultimate object of devotion for secular humanists, man and woman, through the public sacrament of unbridled human sexuality. This worship inaugurates a new religious credo. Do whatever you feel like, with whomever you feel like, whenever you feel like, however you feel like. And this is where Islam comes into the issue. What most of us baby boomers were not counting on was that our children's children, generation X and Y, would be unconvinced that secular humanism has lasting value. And given all the uncertainties they face in a certain economy, uncertain money system, uncertain relationships, failed marriages, transient sex lives, and a radically weakened Christian message. You see, Islam offers Generation X, however strange and outrageous it may seem to us baby boomers, a moral certitude for both public and private behavior and belief. What Islam offers people not only their own natural constituents like Arabs, Persians, and other Middle Eastern peoples, but many Anglo-Westerners, as you see in these pictures, is a set of absolutes, a belief in certainties, and thus moral stability that has for the most part passed away from Western culture. Now, let me be straight here. I'm not suggesting that Islam's correct. And I'm also not suggesting that secularism has no merit whatsoever. But what I am saying is that if Western culture is going to survive. In the long run, it won't be because of secular humanism. Not until we see a revitalized and modern public expression of our Judeo-Christian heritage, one that embraces the wonders of modern technology and style, yet maintains the core principle and values of the past, will the West be able to withstand Islamic expansionism. I'm Tristan Emmanuel. And I make no apologies.